Dear students, today we will discuss about TDFA. TDFA is Thulium Doped Fiber Amplifier. Let us see. In the previous video, we have studied about Doped Fiber Amplifier. In that case, we have studied about RBM Doped Fiber Amplifier. That means a fiber section is doped with RBM material and, you, and this EDFA that is EDFA is used as a C-band amplifier. And that EDFA is working in the wavelength of 1,550 nanometer and the pump source used there is 980 nanometer to 1,480 nanometer. The scientists have experimented the wavelength nearer to this wavelength that is, the, in the, that is near to 1,550 nanometer. The nearer wavelength can be used as a, another doped fiber amplifier or not. But they have found that those wavelengths are used for different applications in the case of WDM technique. So they go for the S-band wavelength or S-band frequencies and the wavelength corresponding to 1004. So they found that the wavelength of 1470 nanometer can be when the fiber is used in that wavelength range that fiber doped with the thulium can be can be used as an amplifier that means a thulium doped fiber amplifier works as an amplifier in the wavelength range of 1470 nanometer so that wavelength is in the s band range so tdfa is used as an s they found that tdfa is used as an s band amplifier and that works in the wavelength of 1470 nanometer and they have used 790 nanometer 1550 nanometer and 1400 nanometer pumping basically Comparing to EDFA, that is, TDFA working is complex and it, it is a four-level system. Basically, EDFA is a three-level system. In EDFA, the three levels are ground level, higher energy level E3 and a metastable level E2. But in the case of TDFA, it has got four energy levels and the three levels are metastable energy states. So, so let us um, see the detailed energy band diagram in coming in the in, uh, coming slides basically tdfa is a fluoride based fiber that means fluoride glass fiber will be doped with the thulium material in the case of rbm doped fiber fiber amplifier we are doping silica glass fibers with the rbm but here in tdfa we are doping fluoride based fiber with the thulium so basically we will use ZB land fibers for fluoride glasses fibers that means ZB land means that Z stands for zirconium fluoride B stands for barium fluoride L stands for lanthanum fluoride A stands for aluminum fluoride and N for sodium fluoride and here the zirconium composition in that glass is 53 percentage and barium composition for that fluoride glass is 20 percentage and also sodium composition is also 20 percentage lanthanum and aluminum constitute 4 percentage and 3 percentage all together constitute 100 percentage that means the fluoride glass materials used is ZB land fibers and this ZB land fibers that is the ZB land fluoride glass is doped with Thulium. That is why we are obtaining TDFA that is Thulium doped fiber and that Thulium doped fiber will act as amplifier. So let us see. This is the energy band diagram of this Thulium doped fiber amplifier. You can see that there are this zero represents the ground level. This is the first energy. This is second and third. This is four and five are almost similar energy levels and here the plot is against the energy you can see that the energy is in the increasing order that is 5 10 15 and you can see here they show the wavelength and you can see that for the lowest energy the wavelength wavelength is see from the 0 to 1 the wavelength is 1900 nanometer that means when whenever energy is less wavelength is higher so for highest energy you can see that for the three level energy is high that is somewhat between 10 and 15 and the wavelength corresponding to this is very less that is 790 nanometer and here the pump used is you can see that is 790 nanometer pump is there and also 1550 nanometer pump is there 
and also there is 1400 nanometer pumping is there and here for the amplifier action to takes place the transition of the electrons should takes place from this level 3 to 1 that means this 3 to 1 transition will emit a wavelength of 1460 nanometer you can see in the band diagram that 3 to 1 transition emits 1460 nanometer wavelength and this correspond to amplified amplified light that means amplification process emits this wavelength of light okay so first of all we will pump the fiber that is doped fiber that is toly thulium doped fiber amplifier by using a pump energy of usually the pumping is provided with the diodes laser diodes so that pump energy is that pump wavelength is 790 nanometer so once the electrons in this energy level ground state obtain this wavelength or obtains this energy corresponding to 790 nanometer they will move to third state but in the third state third energy state the time lifetime for the electrons is very less that is around 1.3 nanosecond so they will not stay there that is an unstable state so those electrons will decay to this first energy state by emitting a wavelength of 1460 nanometer so this correspond to 1460 nanometer emission see so this is corresponding to the amplifier amplification wavelength so we have to increase the number of electrons in this energy state that is in the third energy state for this transition to take place so one method is to pump the electrons in the lower energy state to this state so we are using another pump source see here we are using another pump source of 1000 1050 nanometer so when we are using this pump energy the electrons from this energy state or carriers from this energy state will jump to this fifth energy state but it is an unstable state or metastable state so they will decay to this third energy state in the presence of the pump this electrons will stimulated um, this electrons from this third energy state will be undergo stimulated emission and they will decay to this first energy state where the lifetime is 10 milliseconds so the electrons will stay here more than comparing to this state that is the time period or lifetime corresponding to this state is first energy state is 10 millisecond or 11 millisecond approximately it is 11 millisecond so this electrons will be more stable when they are staying at this energy state so we can say that compare this ground energy state can be omitted rather the transition takes place from this state to this state so next you can see here that when we are applying a pump of 1050 nanometer there will be electrons in the ground state they also will be excited to higher energy state but when they get this energy get this wavelength 1550 nanometer but they cannot reach to this state and also you can see that there is no energy level corresponding to this uh, this portion so they will not stay anywhere so the transition takes place from this first state to this state because there is the allowable energy state is in the 5 to 4 and the energy corresponding to this is 15 so when the electrons at the ground state obtain get the energy corresponding to 1550 they will not reach here but the electrons in the first energy level when they get 1050 nanometer they will reach here and from there they will go to non-radiative transition to this third energy state and from there they will go to this energy state by emitting this is a radiative trans um, uh, radiative decay that means fluorescence decay um, uh, decay that means uh, the photons will be emitted when the electrons in this state is transferred to this state so also there is another pump source that directly transfers uh, the electrons or carriers from the first energy state to this third energy state but they will uh, stimulate uh, they will undergo stimulated emission and they will uh, go to this energy state so this process is um, continuing so that uh, more and more photons will be emitted due to this stimulated emission from the third energy state to first energy state and the emitted photons will be in the wavelength 
റേഞ്ച് ഓഫ് തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർ സിക്സ്റ്റി നാനോമീറ്റർ ആൻഡ് ഓൾ അതർ ഡീക്കേസ് ആർ നോൺ റേഡിയേറ്റീവ് ഡീക്കേസ് ദ വിൽ നോട്ട് എമിറ്റ് എനി അതർ ഫോട്ടോൺസ് സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് ദി എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷൻ ഫോർ ദിസ് എനർജി ബാൻഡ് ഡയഗ്രാം സോ ലെറ്റ് സി ദി ട്രാൻസിഷൻ യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ ദി എസ് ബാൻഡ് ആംപ്ലിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഈസ് ത്രീ ടു വൺ വിത്ത് സെൻട്രൽ വേവ് ലെങ്ത് ഓഫ് ദി ഫ്ലൂറസൻസ് ബീങ് തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർ സിക്സ്റ്റി നാനോമീറ്റർ ദിസ് ഫ്ലൂറസൻസ് മീൻസ് ദിസ് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ടു റേഡിയേറ്റീവ് ട്രാൻസിഷൻ സോ യു ക്യാൻ സി ദാറ്റ് ഫോർ റേഡിയേറ്റീവ് ട്രാൻസിഷൻ ദി ട്രാൻസിഷൻ ഷുഡ് ടേക്സ് പ്ലേസ് ഫ്രം ദി തേർഡ് എനർജി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ടു ഫസ്റ്റ് എനർജി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദി ലോവർ ലെവൽ ഓഫ് ദി ആംപ്ലിഫയർ ട്രാൻസിഷൻ ഈസ് നോട്ട് ദി ഗ്രൗണ്ട് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദി തൂലിയ മയോൺ ആൻഡ് ട്രീ ഡി എഫ് എ ഈസ് ബേസിക്കലി എ ഫോർ ലെവൽ ആംപ്ലിഫയർ ആൻഡ് ദി ഫസ്റ്റ് പമ്പ് ട്രാൻസിഷൻ യൂസ് സെവൻ നയൻറ്റി നാനോമീറ്റർ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് എക്സൈറ്റ്സ് എ തൂലിയ മയോൺ ഫ്രം ദി ഗ്രൗണ്ട് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ടു ദി തേർഡ് ലെവൽ ആൻഡ് ദി ലൈഫ് ടൈം ഈസ് വൺ പോയിൻറ്റ് ത്രീ മില്ലി സെക്കൻഡ് ഹിയർ സി ഹിയർ ദി ലൈഫ് ടൈം ഈസ് വൺ പോയിൻറ്റ് ത്രീ മില്ലി സെക്കൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫ്രം ദി ഗ്രൗണ്ട് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ടു തേർഡ് ലെവൽ ഇറ്റ് റിക്വയർ സെവൻ നയൻറ്റി നാനോമീറ്റർ വേ ലെങ്ത് ആൻഡ് ദി നെക്സ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഈസ് ടു സ്റ്റിമുലേറ്റഡ് എമിഷൻ പ്രോസസ്സ് ആൻഡ് വിച്ച് എൻസ് അപ്പ് ഇൻ ദി ലെവൽ വൺ ആൻഡ് അറ്റ് ദിസ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ദി സിസ്റ്റം വുഡ് ടെർമിനേറ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ദി ലൈഫ് ടൈം ഇൻ ഓഫ് ദി ലെവൽ വൺ ഈസ് ഫ്ലൂറൈഡ് ഗ്ലാസ് ഈസ് അബൌട്ട് ലെവൻ മില്ലി സെക്കൻഡ് ഡ്യൂ ടു ദി ലോ ഫോട്ടോൺ എനർജി ഓഫ് ദീസ് ക്ലാസസ് ദസ് എ സെക്കൻഡ് പമ്പ് ട്രാൻസിഷൻ ഈസ് നീഡ് ടു പോപ്പുലേറ്റ് ദി ലെവൽ വൺ and one possibility is ex- is excited state absorption that is from 1 to 5 at 1050 nanometer that is second pumping is 1050 nanometer that excites the electrons from this level to this level but they will not stay here because the lifetime is very less here so they will um, spontaneously emitted um, photons and from the, uh, from the third level it will stimulate undergo stimulated emission The thulium ions in level 5 will undergo a fast non-radiative decay ending in the upper amplifier level 3 so the energy loop is closed. In practice, large lifetime of the level 1 leads to the fact that the second pump is much more important than the first one and the TDFA is working when the 790 nanometer pump is omitted. See, here the di- in the band diagram, the, here the lifetime of the electrons in the first level is more than that is around 11 millisecond so this ground level will be omitted then the transition takes place from this first level to other levels that is why it is acting as a four level system that means the ground level is omitted and the first and in a pumped tdfa level 1 due to its large lifetime plays the role of the ground state also tdfa behaves as a quasi three level amplifier and when we are comparing this tdfa with the edfa you know that in the case of edfa we are using two pumping sources that is at 980 nanometer and 4480 nanometer and in the case of edfa the 980 nanometer pump correspond to 1550 nanometer pump in the case of tdfa and similarly in the case of edfa we are using 1480 nanometer pump that corresponds to 1400 nanometer pumping in the case of tdfa when we are pumping the tdfa at 1005 1050 nanometer that type of amplifier can be used as a pre amplifier configuration that means it has lower power conversion efficiency and also the population uh, the population inversion level here will be 100 percentage and that results in the low noise figure and when the tdf is pumped at 1400 nanometer it can be used as a power amplifier that means it would it will have a higher power conversion efficiency and a lower inversion level and higher noise figure next we can see the tdfa configuration we know that tdfa is a doped fiber amplifier that means fiber fluoride glass fiber is or zb land fiber is doped with thulium material when we are using this configuration you, using this tdfa amplifier in the communication system we have to join this tdfa fiber with ordinary silica fiber so we are joining two different fibers that is silica fiber with fluoride fluoride fiber so we have to consider the mode field diameter of the silica fiber and fluoride fiber you can see that the two fibers have different mode field diameters so we have to use higher numerical aperture fiber for the zb land fibers that means hna fibers for zb land fibers so for joining tdfa fiber with the silica fiber we have to use different splicing techniques such as t tec and gs you can see here that this is a fiber length that is fluoride fiber that is zb land fiber and it is doped with the thulium and we have to 
join it with the ordinary silica fiber in the communication purposes and this section will act as amplifier that this fiber section will act as amplifier so for joining techniques we have to use tec that means thermally diffused expander core and gs that is glue spicing techniques see you can see here that this is the configuration and here first we will give a signal which is to be transmitted and also we will give the pump signal through a laser diode and those two signals will be coupled to this um, transmission channel or fiber by using wavelength division coupling and those signals this coupled signals will be um, coupled to this signals will be coupled to the ordinary silica fiber this section represents the silica fiber and then we have to amplify this signals coming through the silica fiber for that amplification purpose we are using this thulium doped fiber amplifier or tdfa fiber but we cannot directly join this silica fiber with this tdfa fiber so we have to use a different splice splicing technique to join the different sections of the fiber that splicing techniques are tec that is thermally diffused expander core and glue splicing and we can join the silica fiber with this tdfa fiber at the end of this tdfa that is amplification we have to again join the uh, tdfa fiber with the silica fiber so we have to use glue splicing and thermally diffused expander core splicing and uh, the this tdfa will be joined with ordinary ordinary silica fiber and the signal can be taken outside so this is the basic tdfa configuration with the silica fiber so that's all about this topic thank you